stand next to a Boeing 777. Those engines are massive, each one wider than a Boeing 737 fuselage. Now walk over to an Airbus A340. Four engines hang from the wings, but something feels wrong. They look almost comically small, like someone fitted a heavyweight boxer with a child's gloves. While the 777 flaunts turbofans the size of small apartments, the A340's engines seem almost dainty by comparison. This isn't a design mistake. It's the visible evidence of one of aviation's most fascinating engineering compromises, a decision that would define the aircraft's entire existence, seal its commercial fate, and teach the industry a brutal lesson about betting against the future. You're about to discover why Airbus deliberately chose four tiny engines when everyone else was going bigger, how a canceled super engine forced a radical redesign, and why this engineering gamble made perfect sense in 1987 but became the A340's death sentence by 2011. If you love aviation and want to learn more about the incredible engineering decisions that shape the planes we fly on, hit that subscribe button. Because what you're about to learn will change how you see every four-engine jet forever. The engine that never was. Here's the first secret. The A340 was never supposed to have those small engines at all. Picture this. It's 1987. Airbus engineers are designing their new long-haul jet around a revolutionary power plant called the IAE Superfan. This wasn't just another engine. It was a glimpse into the future. Variable pitch fan blades. An ultra-high bypass ratio of 20 to 1. Geared turbofan technology that wouldn't become mainstream for another 25 years. The Superfan promised 30,000 pounds of thrust with fuel efficiency that would make modern engines jealous. Two of these beasts could power a wide-body aircraft across any ocean. Airbus was so confident they built the entire A340 program around this engine. Then, disaster struck. April 1987. After years of development and hundreds of millions invested, IAE pulled the plug. The gearbox couldn't handle the stress. The variable pitch mechanism created insurmountable technical problems. The engine that was supposed to revolutionize aviation was dead. Think about that for a moment. Airbus had already launched the A340 program. Airlines were placing orders. The assembly lines were being prepared. And suddenly, the heart of their new aircraft, gone. This left Airbus facing an impossible choice. Cancel the entire program and hand the long haul market to Boeing? Or find another solution, fast. They chose option three. Take an engine designed for single aisle aircraft and multiply it by four. The CFM-56 Gamble. The CFM-56 wasn't built for this job. It powered Boeing 737s and Airbus A320, narrow body workhorses, not intercontinental giants. Each engine produced just 31,200 pounds of thrust. A Boeing 777 single GE90 engine, 115,000 pounds, do the math. One 777 engine could almost replace all four A340 engines combined. But here's what's truly fascinating. This apparent weakness was actually Airbus's secret weapon. In 1987, if you wanted to fly from London to Singapore, regulation said you needed four engines, period. It was called ETOPS, Extended Twin Engine Operations Performance Standards. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? This regulation restricted twin engine aircraft to routes within 60 minutes of an emergency airport. Cross the Pacific with two engines? Illegal. Fly over the North Pole? Forget it. Four engines meant freedom. The A340 could fly anywhere, anytime, without restriction. Direct routes over vast oceans, Arctic wastelands, the Sahara Desert. While Boeing's twins had to zigzag along coastlines, the A340 drew straight lines across the globe. Suddenly, those four small engines didn't look like a compromise. They looked like a master stroke. The shared DNA secret. But wait. How does a company completely redesign an aircraft around different engines without going bankrupt? Here's the genius move nobody talks about. Airbus didn't build one aircraft, they built two. And they made them almost identical. The A340 and its twin engine sibling, the A330, shared everything. Same fuselage, down to the last rivet. Same wings, 60.3 meters of swept aluminum. Same cockpit, every switch, every display, identical. Same tail, same landing gear, same coffee makers in the galleys. 90% commonality. Think about what that means. 
Airlines could train pilots once and have them fly both aircraft. A pilot could fly an A330 to New York on Monday and an A340 to Tokyo on Thursday. No additional training. No separate type rating. Just walk onto a different plane and fly. Maintenance crews needed one set of manuals, one part's inventory, one set of procedures. An airline operating both types essentially had a single aircraft with two engine options. It was operational elegance disguised as product diversity. This wasn't just clever, it was revolutionary. Development costs split between two programs, certification, streamlined, production, same assembly line, same workers, same processes. Boeing had nothing like it. The 777 was the 777. The 767 was the 767. Different planes, different training, different everything. But here's where it gets interesting. The performance problem. Nobody wanted to talk about. Imagine you're a pilot. You've just pushed the thrust levers forward for takeoff. The engines spool up. The aircraft starts rolling and rolling and rolling. A Boeing 777 needs about 8,000 feet of runway for a typical long-haul departure. The A340, sometimes over 11,000 feet. At hot, high-altitude airports like Denver or Johannesburg, pilots would use every inch of available pavement, watching the runway end approach while the aircraft seemed to leisurely consider whether it wanted to fly today. One pilot described it perfectly. The 777 just rockets into the sky. The A340 politely requests permission from gravity. The numbers tell the story. Thrust to weight ratio, the muscle to mass equation that determines performance. The A340-300 managed just 0.22. The 777, 0 0.30. That's the difference between struggling up a hill and sprinting up it. Pilots developed a saying, the A340 doesn't take off. It just gets the Earth to drop away from underneath it. But here's what's remarkable. Passengers loved it. That gentle, endless acceleration felt smooth, refined, almost luxurious. No violent shove into the seat back, no dramatic rotation, just a gradual transition from ground to sky that felt more like riding a magic carpet than launching a rocket. The four engines created something else too. Redundancy that bordered on paranoia. Lose an engine on a twin? You've just lost 50% of your thrust. Lose one on an A340? 75% remains. Lose two engines on the same wing, something that actually happened to a British Airways 747 once, and you could still fly. For airlines operating over the most remote regions on Earth, that redundancy wasn't just comforting, it was essential. When physics meets economics. Here's where our story takes a dark turn. Four engines burn more fuel than two. It's not complicated math. The A340 consumed 12 to 15% more fuel per seat than the 777. On a 14-hour flight, that's thousands of gallons. Multiply by hundreds of flights, and you're talking millions of dollars. In 1987, oil cost $20 a barrel. Airlines could absorb the efficiency penalty. By 2008, oil hit $147. Suddenly, every extra gallon burned cash that airlines didn't have. But fuel was just the beginning. Four engines need four oil changes, four sets of fan blades to inspect, four combustion chambers to overhaul, eight more bearings than a twin, 16 more fuel nozzles. The maintenance bills were staggering. $840 per flight hour just for engines, almost double what twins required. Then came the regulatory earthquake nobody saw coming. Remember ETOPS? That 60-minute restriction that made four engines essential? By 1988, it expanded to 180 minutes. By 2000, 240 minutes. Today, 370 minutes. That's over six hours. Enough to be 2,000 miles from the nearest airport. Suddenly, twins could fly anywhere quads could. The A340's biggest advantage evaporated like morning mist. The market's verdict was brutal. In 2005, airlines ordered 155 Boeing 777s. The A340? Fifth, not 15 dozen, 15 aircraft, total. The Trent solution that came too late. Airbus knew they had a problem. Their solution? Bigger engines. Much bigger. Enter the Rolls-Royce Trent 500. Each one produced 61,900 pounds of thrust. 
nearly double the CFM56. The A3-4500 and A3-4600 variants could finally match the muscle of their twin-engine rivals. The A340-600 became a genuine marvel. At 247 feet, it was longer than a 747, carrying 440 passengers distances that seemed impossible. The A340-500 could fly from Singapore to New York non-stop, 9,500 miles without refueling. But it was too late. The damage was done. Airlines had already fallen in love with twin-engine economics. Why operate four fuel-hungry engines when two would do? Here's a number that tells the whole story. Boeing sold over 1,700 777s. Airbus, 377 eighth ever. The Lufthansa Enigma. So why in 2024 does Lufthansa still fly 22 of them? Walk through Frankfurt Airport at dawn. Watch that distinctive four-engine silhouette taxi toward the runway. In an age when every other airline has given up on quads, Lufthansa's A340s still thunder skyward daily. The answer lies in a combination only Lufthansa possesses. They own their aircraft outright, no lease payments bleeding cash monthly. They maintain them in-house through Lufthansa Technic, Europe's largest aircraft maintenance empire. They operate from slot-constrained hubs where frequency matters more than efficiency. But even Lufthansa knows the clock is ticking. By 2028, their last A340 will retire, ending an era that began when four engines meant freedom and small engines made sense. What really killed the A340? The A340 didn't fail because it was a bad aircraft. It failed because the world changed faster than anyone predicted. When Airbus chose those four small CFM56 engines, they were solving a 1987 problem with 1987 thinking. ETOPS restrictions were real. Engine reliability was good, but not perfect. Fuel was cheap. The future seemed predictable. They couldn't have known that engine reliability would improve so dramatically that failures would become statistical anomalies, that regulations would evolve to make twins as capable as quads, that oil prices would spike, crash, and spike again making efficiency not just important but existential. The Superfans cancellation forced a compromise that seemed brilliant at the time. Use proven, reliable engines that maintenance crews worldwide already knew. Multiply them for redundancy. Share the design with a twin to spread costs. It was textbook risk management. But sometimes the safest choice becomes the riskiest one. By playing it safe with proven technology, Airbus missed the efficiency revolution that was coming. Those four small engines, so sensible in 1987, became anchors dragging the A340 toward obsolescence. The lesson hidden in plain sight. Stand at any major airport today, count the four-engine passenger jets, you might see one or two a day where once they dominated the skies. The A340's tiny engines tell a story bigger than just one aircraft. They remind us that in aviation, like in life, the future rarely unfolds as we expect. That brilliant solutions can become fatal flaws when the world shifts beneath our wings. That sometimes the engine you can't have shapes history more than the one you can. The next time you see an A340, and you better look quickly because they're disappearing fast, remember what those four small engines represent. Not failure, but adaptation. Not mistakes, but decisions that made perfect sense until they didn't. Because that's the thing about engineering compromises. They're only compromises until the world changes. Then they become history. The A340 flew with small engines because that's what physics, regulations, and economics demanded in 1987. It died because physics improved, regulations evolved, and economics became ruthless. Four small engines. One big lesson. Aviation doesn't forgive those who bet against the future. Which brings us to the ultimate irony. Remember that cancelled superfan engine with its revolutionary geared turbofan technology? 25 years later, Pratt and Whitney succeeded where IAE failed. Their PW1000G geared turbofan now powers the Airbus A320NEO family. The technology, the A340 was supposed to have finally arrived, just in time to power the narrow bodies that would help kill the last four engine jets. Sometimes the future comes exactly when it's supposed to, just not for the aircraft that needed it most. What do you think? Was the A340 a visionary design trapped by circumstances, or an engineering compromise that was doomed from the start? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to discover more incredible stories about aviation's most fascinating engineering decisions, that subscribe button is right there. Trust me, the next one's going to blow your mind.